Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, I had a voice radio, so today I am showing you some cards from Shining Legends. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I am showing you a bunch of random cards, but they're not random cards. They're bad cards. People tell me sometimes I'm too positive on this channel. Ross, you say, you only look at good cards. You say every card you look at is good. You know what? I usually do. Because I make a point of showing you cards that are interesting. So today, I am showing you cards from Shining Legends that we don't need because they're not as good as other cards we've got. And of course, the usual rules apply. If this video is well received and watched by a bunch of people, we can do this again in the future. So first up, ladies and gentlemen, we've got Latios. Latios isn't very good. Now, it's a Psychic-type Pokemon that's weak to Psychic, which, of course, means that Garbodor is hitting for weakness. You play three item cards, you're being one hit KO by Garbodor's Trash Valance. That is not particularly good. One redeeming feature, Retreat Cost of One, is quite nice. It does 70 damage for free energy, one of which has to be a Psychic Energy. That's not a particularly good attack. But the reason Latios makes it into this video is because it's a rubbish version of the promo Tapu Coco. The first attack for a double colorless energy does 30 damage and 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon, which sounds not entirely terrible until you realize that for the same double colorless attack cost, the promo Tapu Coco will do 20 damage to the active and 20 damage to all the bench. Now, you might be thinking, well, but Latios does more damage. Yet to two Pokemon not to six. And, of course, Tapu Koko's got a much better second attack because it does a relevant amount of damage. Although, to be fair, Latios of a Choice Band will KO an Espeon, but let's not say too many nice things. That ruins my argument. And, of course, Tapu Koko's got free retreat, so you can start with it and retreat it. You can pop it up in the active at the beginning of your turn while you're thinking of what to do. Latios has a retreat cost of one. We don't need Latios... We've got Tapu Lele. Better retreat cost, better weakness, better attack. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? It's just plain better. Oh, yeah, and you get to use E for Paradise Conservation Area if that's the kind of thing that you enjoy doing. And you get to use the upcoming Raikou, who, might I add, is actually really good. It's basically just like a lightning type of Eltul. I could keep going, but the, the, the main point is this. Latios is a rubbish version of Tapu Koko. We don't need it. Speaking of legendaries that are rubbish versions of non-legendaries, Shining Jirachi. Now again, it's a psychic Pokemon with terrible HP and level balls rotated now, so we can't even use that. Retreat cost of one is actually quite good. And, I mean, the weakness to Psychic would hurt if it wasn't for the pitiful HP. We've got one attack on Shining Jirachi. For a psychic energy... 10 damage, remove all evolution cards from your opponent's evolved active Pokemon, and return those cards to your opponent's hand. Now, this actually is a fairly useful attack. Let's say you get something like a Decidueye. You can do 60 damage to that Decidueye. You can devolve it down with Shining Jirachi to a Rowlet, who's only got 60 HP, and then that Rowlet just gets KO'd straight away, and off you go. Sounds like fun. So why don't we like Shining Jirachi? Well, the reason is we've got Espeon EX, who just does this exact same thing, but approximately 10 million times better. Because for one, colorless energy, meaning it can be put in any deck whatsoever, not just a psychic deck, it devolves each of your opponent's evolved Pokemon. All of them. Now, to be fair, it's only the highest stage, not every stage like Jirachi, but it's from every Pokemon. And let's go back to the whole Decidueye example. Rowlet's got 60 HP. Well, Dartrix has only got 80 HP. So there isn't a huge difference between devolving down to a 60 HP Rowlet and an 80 HP Dartrix. So to be perfectly honest, why would anybody play Jirachi? Now, to be fair, Espeon does give up two prizes and has that crippling Garbodor weakness. But we've already seen Espeon EX is a really good Pokemon. It's played with Tapu Koko 
and Alolan Ninetales. And what you do is you spread 20 damage to each Pokemon with Tapu Koko. Then you bring in a bit of the old Alolan Ninetales who for a double colorless energy does 50 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon, and you've got a full-on snipe deck going. You can spread your damage around the field wherever you want, as you please. And you know what? It's all just a lot of fun. Then you bring in Espeon EX to evolve all of your opponent's Pokemon down a couple of stages, and Bob is your metaphorical uncle, although obviously it's only devolving him down one stage. Boom, they're all KO'd. You win the game. I played the lovely Joe Bernard, he of Omnipoke himself, in a friendly, and he took five prizes in one turn because I was playing Vespaquen. You'll be pleased to know it was a best of three, and I won the other two games in your face, Joe. Point being, Espeon currently sees play because of this, and it's really good. I haven't taken a poll of Decidueye Alolan Ninetales players, but I am willing to bet that the vast majority of them, by which I mean all of them, would not want to take out Espeon EX and put in Shining Jirachi. Oh yeah, and it's really Alolan Ninetales Decidueye where this card would be most use. And by the time Shining Legends comes out in October, Forest of Giant Plants will have been rotated. We don't need Shining Jirachi. As a side note, the Porygon Z from Burning Shadows actually has Espeon EX's attack in an ability. You get to devolve each of your opponent's evolved Pokemon down one stage. So even if you didn't want to use a two prize GX to do this, you've still got Porygon Z. We don't need Jirachi. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. We don't need him. Now, to be fair, in my overwhelming positivity that I usually hold, there aren't actually that many other cards. Those two really jumped out at me as being useless. But let's go through another couple of cards from this set, which just are plain aren't very good. Jinx. For one Psychic Energy, you get to choose a random card from your opponent's hand, and they shuffle it into their deck. Really? That's it? That's all it does? You don't even discard it. That's not good. For a double colorless energy, 30 damage plus confusion. I mean, okay, you get to use a double colorless energy, but 30 for a double colorless is bad. Now, confusion is pretty good, but then you're using a double colorless energy here. Espeon GX has this same attack for one psychic energy, and you get to have it straight away with an Eevee, because Eevee's got the energy evolution that gets the Espeon right away. So, and then, of course, you've got 200 HP and all of that, and a really good second attack and a really good GX attack, rather than a 90 HP Pokemon with a terrible weakness. It's not good. No one's going to play it. It's a little bit rubbish. There's an Electrode. Another stage one Pokemon, 90 HP is low. Now, it does have free retreat. I'm giving him credit for that. He does have a resistance to metal. I'm giving him credit for that. Fighting weakness is a bit rubbish with Marshadow coming out. Marshadow's got that amazing ability that allows you to copy any basic attacks in your discard, which is just a quick way of saying that all decks will now have a decent fighting type attacker, so fighting weakness is not one you want to have. So as well as a pitiful HP for a one lightning energy... 60 damage now that's not actually terrible one for 60 by now you probably know my boy don van prime did that but it's not affected by weakness resistance or any other effects on your opponent's active pokemon now i'll give electrode a little bit of credit because it can go through effects so things like glaceon ex that would stop an evolve pokemon Electrode goes right through. But all of these decks are going to be playing Raikou anyway. Or can play the promo Tapu Koko anyway. So you don't need Electrode for that. Not hitting for weakness sucks. With a choice badge you could be hitting 180 damage. And actually that would be pretty good. But you're not. You're only hitting 90 this is rubbish, ladies and gentlemen. It is absolutely nothing to get excited about. So, those are some cards from Shining Legends to just avoid. Two of them really jumped out to me as just terrible versions of existing cards. And the other couple, I mean, they're just a bit rubbish, to be honest. And people always tell me I'm too positive in my videos. So I thought we'd inject just a little bit of negativity. But don't worry, ladies and gentlemen. 
Positive Ross is coming right back. There's lots more positivity to come. But chuck it down in the comments, ladies and gentlemen. Was this the kind of video you wanted? Looking at bad cars and just saying they're bad and pointing out why and... You know, just not giving love to every card in the format. Or would you like fewer of these videos in the future? Let me know, ladies and gentlemen. Regardless, make sure you like this video. It will make me happy. Subscribe to this channel. It will make me happy. Follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, which you've guessed it will make me happy. And if you want to check some live PTCG Radio, you can do so at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash PTCG Radio. By far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.